Hey everyone, and welcome to my Procreate demo for what I'm calling the Craft Paper Double Feature. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to cover both of these at the same time since they are using a lot of the same techniques and the process was relatively short. Um, so first, here's a texture I got off the internet off of a dom public domain type thing, um, Creative Commons type thing. Um, it's just a texture for craft paper which is like a brown paper it's like what um like a grocery bag might be made out of um so i start off here by just treating the paper a little bit i wanted a little bit darkened i wanted the the hue to be slightly shifted and then i just put like a big vignette around the whole thing so that it felt a little bit more like a scanned sheet of paper um and then i started working um the whole purpose of me doing this one was that i just wanted to see if i could replicate the sort of methods that i used to use when I used to go to, when I used to run Sketchbomb in San Francisco and I would usually bring like uh, a rose cold erase pencil and I would bring a ballpoint pen and I would bring a white paint pen. Um, and that's sort of how I did a lot of work at one point. If you look through like my galleries on DeviantArt or Instagram or something like that, um, you can see that. And so I wanted to see if I could do it digitally. So that's how this whole idea started. So that's why it's, we've got the craft paper and then we've got sort of this pink pencil that I'm using, which is just the fat pencil. This whole thing is the fat pencil, except for the actual uh, part where I'm trying to replicate the white paint pen, which I'll get to that when we get to that part of the piece. So um, right now, really, I had no idea what I wanted to draw. Like I said, this was just about testing the method. So I just sort of started with like, you know, the usual shapes that I'm comfortable with and trying out a couple of new things here, pushing features there. Um, and otherwise it was really just, this was just sort of a free sketching, um, sort of exercise. Um, so you can see then I took the, ro the rose colored pencil, I desat or not desaturated, I lowered the opacity just a little bit because I wanted to knock it back because if you've ever used like a, a rose or a um, carmine red um, cold erase pencil on craft paper, you know that it's sort of, it's really hard to see. It sort of doesn't pick up very well. Um, so I wanted to, again, I'm trying to replicate something that's real. So the good news is I already know how all of that reacts and now I'm just trying to mimic it as closely as possible. Um, so here I'm still just using the uh, fat pencil because ballpoint in a lot of ways is very similar to pencil, especially if it's just like a standard Bic pen that you would buy anywhere. So that's what I'm doing here. I just shifted to black and I'm using that and what I'm, I'm deliberately trying to sort of leave in a couple of mistakes here and there and I'm deliberately trying to make sure that the strokes from the pen slash pencil are still visible that way I'm because I'm, I'm just trying to mimic something real I'm actually not going for super clean or super digital I'm trying to make it look like there were you know some mistakes here and there so obviously I'm still taking advantage of the fact that it's digital I'm creating layers and using that to sort of you know control what's what's happening but there's like little errors where I might like shade outside of a, of a line or something and I leave those in there deliberately, as long as they're not like too egregious or I, I dislike the way they look or something. The nice thing about this method is I think that it's it's got a good look and I like working this way, um, but then also compared to something that's more rendered, um, I can knock out a whole thing in like one sitting and it doesn't get, you know, uh, I'm not like having to split up my time and all that. So here now I'm switching to the uh, white paint pen. Um, the brush I used for this, which actually was very close to the way a white paint pen works on craft paper, was the um, damp brush uh, in the painting settings, or the painting brushes. It's called the damp brush. And then I put that on top because when I would normally do this with real medium, uh, it was the last thing that I would do and it would go on top. So if I sort of overrided the uh, the pen then I wanted to make sure that I still had that so then here last thing I do is I just took like a flat brush and I um, started applying grayscale set to multiply so that I could sort of try and mimic marker um, I don't often work with gray marker but that's sort of what I wanted to do uh, in this and so at first I thought I could do some sort of a layering gradient thing which is what's going on here but then I didn't like that so you see I merge it all and then I warp it all and I thought that was kind of like a really cool thing for the background it sort of fit the angle of the figure and all that just sort of worked out um so that's that's basically it for that so it's 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 four things it's that pencil it's the the ballpoint pen it's the marker and it's the white paint pen and that's how we got that look so i got a little bit of a zoom in here so you can see sort of what it ends up looking like i think it came out pretty good 
So now let's take a minute and actually dive into how I set up that canvas. Um, so you can see here I've already brought in the image. This is on a layer. Like I said, this is just a photo of craft paper. I can zoom in here, you see it starts to degrade a little bit. Um, and what the first thing that I do in order to try and get this to where I want it, um, like if I were in Photoshop, I would just use brightness contrast. In Procreate here, we jump to curves. And so my main uh, goal here is to make it a little bit more intense. So take that top little node and pull it a little bit in, take the bottom little node and pull it a little bit in. You see it gets a little richer, it gets a little bit higher contrast, a little bit more intense. Um, and then from there, I might alter the hue of it a little bit or desaturate it a little bit and then darken it. This brings it a little bit closer to the craft paper that I'm used to working with, which is a little bit more intense than my reference um, that I have here, the image that I'm using here. So um, that's it. And then I added a vignette on the other thing um, so you could see uh, you can see that. I mean, that's just, that's pretty standard method. I could show that some other time, but I don't show that here in this video. So right now I'm just showing, uh, this is what it looks like over it. Um, I'm just taking the, the fat pencil and going over it with black to show you. And now here, let's, uh, run through like a quick, um, you know, this is just a really shitty sketch to show you exactly how I might've actually done the actual art part of this. So again, embracing the fact that it's digital, um, but trying to replicate traditional. So I'm just sort of drawing on with 100% um, like pink, which is close to, it's close to the rose. I mean, it could be a little bit more reddish than, than the color that it is. But, um, and then I created a new layer on top after lowering the opacity on this. So you'll see this. Switch to black, same pencil, and then I go in there. Some of you have asked why your version of the pencil might be blurrier or whatever. It could be the size of your canvas. I'm working at, uh, in this case, 12 inches by eight inches at 300 DPI. Um, but then also, like when I'm trying to get like really sharp sections, I mean, that brush is pretty small in order to try and get that sharp stuff. So if you're getting like a really blurry thing, maybe you need to shrink the pencil and instead just sort of outline what you need to fill and then fill that in. Another thing that people have really asked about is how to colorize lines. So I'm going to quickly run through that. So here is a piece I did in the past. You guys can look this one up. I think it's called Deddy. Um, but anyway, so you can see here the line is just jet black. Now this one was drawn in Procreate. So that means that it is 100% transparent. There's a line on its own layer. You can see there in the little thumbnail. And then let's turn off the background. So you can see here that it's 100% transparent. So this is the easiest type of line for us to change the color of. Um, it really just starts with how we've got it selected there. You tap the little thumbnail for the layer and you can see then you hit select and now you've actually got those lines selected. Um, and then you just create a new layer, pick the color that you want, tap on that layer thumbnail and you say fill and it fills. So that is how you can colorize a line uh, when you've drawn it in Procreate or some other digital form and it's got no background. So here now you can go to hue saturation and you can just adjust that color. You can desaturate it, you can do whatever you want. And so if those of you haven't watched previous videos and you're wondering why, what the purpose of this might be, see I switched to multiply. Now here let me turn that texture back on in the background and you can see that it absorbs some of that texture behind it. The lighter the color, the more it's going to absorb behind it. But now what happens when you've got an image like this? that's actually embedded with the background that it's on. Um, this is a little bit trickier. For, uh, Procreate recently introduced a new feature that um, makes this a little bit easier, but I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. Um, so first things first, I like to then desaturate my image so that I'm only dealing with grayscale. You can see I duplicated it there because I wanna make sure that I can go back if I have to. I would delete that old one if this whole experiment was successful. So first go into hue saturation and desaturate the image. Then I go into curves again, like I did previously with the texture, and I make it more intense. Basically, I'm just trying to get rid of the white. So you can see I'm pulling that top node in a little bit to make it brighter, and that's getting some of the grayscale that's in the white away. Now, obviously, this was a photo with my thumb in it, so let's erase my thumb for a second. And, you know, you could put more work in cleaning this up. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. And now the first thing that I'm gonna show you is uh, Procreate's recolor. So see, oh yeah, I'm sorry. First, if you look at this 
and you select it and fill it just like you did with the other lines, it's gonna take all that data, including the white background. That's what that was right there. It fills the whole thing in pink. You can't even hue shift this because there's no color information here to work with. It's 100% grayscale at this point. So we're gonna use recolor. And here you use your finger to sort of select uh, the, the color you're looking to recolor, and then you use that little slider at the bottom to basically control the threshold. So if you put that at like 100%, then you select the black, there you go, he's recolored pink. Um, I haven't done enough experiments with this to see if it's like every pixel gets colored or not. So I still for now rely on my older method, which is I create a new layer, I fill that layer with the color that I want the lines to be, and then I set that layer to screen. And that's going to affect all of the black and make that the color that I want it to be. So you can see it right there. Now, if we want to continue to work with this, we of course have to then merge it all together. But if we just merge that into that line, see right there, the pink that is over parts of where the image isn't will just be the solid pink that you have as your sort of modifying layer. So what you have to do is, you can see here I create a layer underneath, and then I fill that in white. Boom. There it is, white. And then I merge that down so that the lines are all on one big layer, and then I merge that color down. So you can rewind if you want to see that again, um, and uh, see exactly how those movements went. So now I can take this layer, I can take the hue saturation, and I can adjust it however much I want, I can get all those values in there. And then when I set it to multiply, because multiply makes the white become transparent, the closer to white it is, the more transparent it is, there you go. You get your colorized line. So that's the way that I colorize lines if it wasn't drawn in Procreate, and then prior to that was how I colorize lines if it was drawn in Procreate. So now let's go into um, my piece on Marsala from ExoSquad, which as I said in Instagram, if I just let my hand draw and I don't put too much thought into it, I almost always am going to just draw Marsala because he's such a badass character. Um, I wanted to, for this one, I really wanted to push his features. Um, Marsala is a pretty average looking Neo Sapien, and I just thought that it'd be cool to like really elongate his face and make him feel like a little bit more alien. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you look at a Neo Sapien, there's no there's no confusing the fact that they're alien. I mean, they're bright blue and they've got symbols on their forehead and they've got two thumbs and two fingers on each hand, etc., etc. But um, I just really wanted to push it. Um, I thought it'd be really cool. Also, Marsal is a relatively positive character who has a somewhat tragic backstory. And I just sort of wanted to lean a little bit more into the sort of like concerned, serious vibe. He's not like very serious, but he's serious enough in this picture. So um, that's really my thought behind this version of Marsala. Um, I Exo Squad's one of my favorite things of all time, and I, I tend to want to draw the entire cast, and I start something like this, and then I don't have the time to really do all the cast. Um, I also want to give him a little bit of a different ear. There's, it's just, it's not that much different from a human, and it's not that much different from the way the Neo Sapiens looked in Exosquad, but I just thought it'd be fun to sort of do like a little bit of a weird thing there. So, um, now we're just going in and, uh, basically doing the lines. I'm following the exact same pattern that I did on the last one. Uh, the only difference was I wasn't really planning on doing as much with the, uh, the marker on this one. So again, to recap, this is sort of a pinkish rose color for the base pencil. And then the next pencil up is basically black. However, on this one, I went with like a really dark blue just to try and more closely resemble a black ballpoint pen. It, but it's, it's practically unrecognizable, but that's just what I did. Now with the marker, I'm going in and putting in, um, I took like one of the flat brushes that's kind of generic and I just did a bunch of levels of gray and multiply and then adjusted their opacity so that I could get the different values that I was looking for. And then here is using that, um, damp brush uh, set to white for my white paint pen and then I'm just sort of strategically choosing what I want to push and pull with the white pen and there we go that's uh, that's my version of Marsala so to wrap up here's piece number one you can see it a little bit more closely and then here's piece number two you can see that a little bit more closely and here they are together. So I hope you guys really liked this. This was a bit different than some of the other ones that I've done. Went a little bit deep on the line stuff, which I think could be pretty good. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please hit that like or subscribe button. 
And if you're looking for me in the internet, these are the places where you can find me.